Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Are you struggling with that dreaded slice? Maybe you're going as far as buying a draw bias driver. Maybe you've taken a couple lessons or even taken matter into your own hands. But no matter what you have tried or done, you just can't solve this problem. If this sounds like you, then today's a great day because I'm going to share my two top tips that I share with all of our customers who's struggling with the slice and if it can help them turn that slice into a nice little baby fade, it just might do the same for your swing. So without further delay, let's jump in. Make no mistake about it. If you're struggling with the slice, it's because your club path and face to path relationship isn't in an optimum state. And if I'm ever going to help you turn that slice into a fade, we got to find a little better balance. And although the gear can help, it's never really meant to boil the ocean. It's meant to fine tune and move it a couple degrees. So we got to address root cause, which is your technique. And these two tips I'm about to share with you without question are my two favorite tips for doing so. Now as a quick disclaimer, the tips I'm about to share with you has worked well for our customers and they are definitely my favorites. But just because it worked well for them doesn't necessarily mean that one or both of these tips is going to work well for you. There might be some other extenuating circumstances that's causing your slice, but these are definitely two good starting points to at least rule out. With the first one being focused on your swing direction, so I want to address the club path. Now, although there are a number of different things that can influence your swing direction, this one hands down is the easiest to address. And it's like a set it and forget it type of thing, and it doesn't require a lot of thinking. And what I'm talking about is your body position and more importantly, your body position in correlation to the target line. So whether or not if your body is close to the target or open to the target, the key thing we need to remember is, is that the golf club will always follow wherever the shoulders leads us. That's why it's imperative to make sure that wherever the body is pointing, it's all pointing in the same direction. So toes, knees, hips, and shoulders needs to be either open or close to the target. We can't have a mismatch. And this is the common mistake that we see a lot of our customers make. The bottom half is pointed right where the top half is pointed left. And in that setup, we don't have a snowball chance in hell of hitting a draw because the club is already working to the left. So guys, Here's how you can fix this. Now, in order to determine if you're even impacted by this, we need to simply assess where is the top half of the body pointed versus the bottom half. And you can achieve this by taking a video from this angle. Pay notice to where the toes and knees are pointed. Are they pointed at the target line? Are they close to the target line? And from this viewpoint, they should be pointed a little left. And if this is the case, this is a good thing. But then let's move up the chain and let's take a look at the top half. Can you see those buttons on your shirt collar? Worse yet, can you see the belt buckle on those hips? If the answer is yes, I can promise you, you're gonna favor more of an out to end swing path. And the only shot you're gonna be able to hit is that dreaded slice. So if you are impacted by this, here's how you can potentially solve the problem. Start by soling the golf club about six to eight inches behind the golf ball. Don't worry that the golf club's not directly behind the golf ball. You will still make contact. Then remove your right hand from the grip, put it on your right thigh. Then we gotta work our way from the ground up. So we gotta get our toe line on the same line as our target line. Once we are there, shift your left foot forward an inch, right foot back an inch. That's a two inch total adjustment, believe me, all we need is small increments here. And then that point on, it's very, very straightforward. Knees to the toes, hips to the knees, shoulders to the hips. Once everything is pointed in the same direction, retake your grip and try not to influence that shoulder pointing left. Take a swing at the golf ball and if you're not hitting it less left or right, I'll be completely blown away. Although it may not eliminate the slice, you will definitely be moving in a better direction. The second part of the equation really comes down to face control. 
It has to work in concert with the swing direction we just worked on. A face that's open to the path 12 to 14 degrees to the right is no good. The ball is going to curve a lot more aggressively. So if I can minimize that face at the impact and it only be two to three degrees open, then that's going to produce a much more balanced flight and it's going to curve less. And here is where I see a lot of our customers struggle. And I'm talking about the grip, whether it's the grip position with their hands or the grip tension. Both of these factors can prevent you from releasing a golf club in the manner you need. So let's talk about that best grip position and help you understand why we may need to grip it a certain way. Now we all know that if you struggle with the slice, going with a stronger grip can potentially be your best friend. And if you are missing to the right and you haven't made this change yet, I highly suggest you do so, but do so with the following guidance. And that is when you adjust your hands on a grip, moving them to the right, make sure you're moving both hands in the same amount of increments. And the reason why this is significant and where I see a lot of customers get this wrong is, is that they'll make one adjustment with one hand or the other. Hell, I even go as far to say that I will see a strong left hand and a weak right hand, and that is no good because now you have the wrist fighting against each other. So let me illustrate this point. If you want to go with a strong grip, roll the left wrist to where the thumb is pointed at one o'clock. Roll the right wrist where it's pointed at two o'clock. Now, whenever my right wrist goes into extension, this allows the left wrist to go into flexion and they're going to gain the same range of motion. Opposed to if I keep my left hand in the neutral position and right hand in the, say the three o'clock position, now when my left wrist goes into flexion, I run into a block because my right wrist will only turn so much. Now I'm fighting against each other. So as long as I remember that if I move those hands in the same increments in the same direction, I can keep those wrists working together. The second part of the equation is tension. If I'm gripping the golf club too tight, I will prevent my ability to also release that golf club. And here, nine times out of 10, you're squeezing an eight or a nine, if not white knuckle death gripping that golf club. Here, a good rule of thumb to follow is a six or five in the left, a three or four in the right. The right hand is what I like to refer to as the hitchhiker. So more pressure in the left hand where it's kind of controlling the club and the right hand's really just guiding it on its path. If you lighten up your pressure and get that grip pointed in the right direction, one o'clock and two o'clock, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to close that face a little easier. Should you put your right thumb going down a grip or across the grip? And I will share this from my personal experience. For any of my customers who are struggling with the slice, when they put their thumb going down a grip or slightly to the right, they can gain access to an additional two to three degrees of face closure. So next time you're out on the range, try playing around with that thumb position and who knows, it just might help. So there you have it. Without a doubt, these are my two favorite tips that I like to share with my customers. And if it can help them get their game back on track, I'm pretty sure it can help you get your game back on track as well. So if you did find value in today's content, please do me a favor, press the thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the remarks below. So until next week, thanks for watching.